Eternal Father, I offer you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. May the love and mercy of God be with you. Let us pray. Loving and merciful Father, out of your love, you created us for the kingdom. We kindly beg you to grant us your Holy Spirit to guide us, enter into that kingdom where righteousness, peace, and joy are found and lived. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 to 14. Jesus again, in reply, spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast to his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet, my calves, my fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads, and invite the feast, whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there, not dressed in a wedding garment. He said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet, and cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear good listener, from the Gospel we have just heard, I have chosen a theme, How prepared are you for the kingdom of God? Just like yesterday's gospel, Jesus in today's gospel presents to us a parable to help us cast into the deep of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is compared to a king who calls those who were invited to the marriage feast. This king definitely is God himself. The servants he sends are the prophets, the priests, the religious, men and women of goodwill and those he has designated for his work, those who are at his service. From history, God always sent his servants to prepare his people for the coming of his kingdom. And he does it until now. But the question is, how prepared am I for the kingdom of God? My dear good listener, in the gospel text, when the king sent his servants to call those who had been invited, they were not ready, and so they never came for the marriage feast. One thing we realize about the kingdom of God is that Jesus presents to us something marvelous. It is a feast. It is a celebration. It is the best occasion of a person's life. I believe that the best occasion for the married in their life is the day of their wedding. That's why they make video coverages and many photos to always remind them of that beautiful day. My dear good listener, Jesus helps us to understand the kingdom of God using an understandable language. It is the most beautiful thing to have in life. In other parables, for example, in Matthew chapter 13, verses 44-46, Jesus compares the kingdom of God to a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Or like a merchant searching for fine pearls, when he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. This means that the kingdom of God is that greatest treasure, that greatest part that one ought to possess. It is the greatest feast to celebrate. But the question is, am I convinced and am I ready to accept the invitation? Or like the people in the gospel, I take it for granted and follow those who went off one to his farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. 
from the Bible, God sends his servants, but many of them were mistreated and killed, Jesus inclusive. Listen to the words Jesus says in Luke chapter 13, verse 34. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how many times I yearn to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you were unwilling. My dear good listener, even today in some countries, persecution still goes on against God's servants. The question is, with whom do I identify myself? With the sinners like Peter and other disciples who follow Jesus after he invites them and repent and now they are saints? Or I identify myself with the killers, with those who persecute his servants. My dear good listener, just as we heard, God's invitation is to put you under his wings of protection, just like a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. How prepared am I for the kingdom of God? My dear, when the invited guests refused to go for the marriage feast, the king sent his servants to go to the streets and invite all, both good and bad, for the wedding feast. What could this mean? That God is merciful. He invites all to his kingdom. That is why Jesus in Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, talks about the love and mercy of God. And he says, God makes his son rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and unjust. All this he does so that his children may know, understand, and receive this great love and mercy which have no limits. Are you ready to receive this love and mercy of God? Lastly, when the new guests enter into the wedding hall, the king found a man without a wedding garment and he charged his servants to bind him and cast him into the outer darkness where there would be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. While commenting on this gospel, Pope Francis tells us that God has prepared for the entire human family a feast of love and communion around his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. However, God puts a condition. That is to put on the gift he gives to us, the wedding garment, before entering into the kingdom. The wedding garment symbolizes the love and mass of God, which God gives us gratuitously. Therefore, you and me need the grace of God. The Holy Father says without the grace of God, we cannot make a Christian journey. Therefore, it is not enough to respond to the Lord's invitation. We need to dress in the wedding garment of God's love and mercy. We absolutely need to know that for you and me to enter into the kingdom of God, we pass through the door of conversion. In Mark chapter 1 verse 15, Jesus tells us that the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. My dear good listener, in her diary number 1160, St. Faustina is told by Jesus, that he prolongs the time of mercy for the sake of sinners so that they may repent. Otherwise, he will have eternity for punishing them. Let us not take for granted God's love and mercy. Again, St. Faustina in her diary, number 1563, Jesus tells her, My bride, you always please me by your humility. The greatest misery does not stop me from uniting myself to a soul. But where there is pride, I'm not there. Therefore, let's be humble and accept God's invitation. Let us fight pride and remember that the feast that awaits us, as St. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 14, verse 17, is the kingdom of God, of righteousness, of peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. God bless us, your children, with your Holy Spirit. Grant us the grace to enable us to be numbered among those who will be dressed in white garments and who will see you face to face in heaven. Amen. Remember kindly to recite the chaplet of divine mercy, begging God to stop the spread of coronavirus. The Lord be with you. May God of love and mercy bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.